Well, look at that. The most recent dump find, a median flat screen LCD TV. Whoa, isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? Well, not, uh, not really. <laughs> As you can see, it uh, must be more of a first generation model because uh, it is still fairly clunky, especially if you look up top. Modern TVs are like that thick, so <laughs> but uh, there should be still some quality hiding in there. And uh, most amazing thing, the panel appears to be fine. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in, let it warm up for a while, so that should be fine. Let's see if it's working. Okay, abusing the drill press as a tripod, so if somebody now turns on the drill press, I have to get a new camcorder. This TV, another sign for quality, still uses uh, these uh, computer-style power cables, as you can see. So let's just plug that in and uh, see. Oh, there is even a hard hardware power switch. That's turned on, make sure that's on. <laughs> Otherwise, we, we'll never find out why it's not working. Okay, it's plugged in. It's plugged in. Not doing much, doesn't it? Well, okay. It is doing. No, it is doing plain nothing. So, I guess I'll have to take this thing apart and uh, maybe we can find what went wrong in there. And there we have the unit all taken apart. And uh, the thing that I noticed first, look at the nice design for the sound system. So you can see that's actually sitting in some separate boxes down in the foot. And if you look on the back panel, it's even insulated. So they did that quite nicely, really have to say. These uh, two speakers, these are the woofers. They're just hooked up in parallel. Then we have this uh, tiny little tweeter sitting right there. Probably not doing much, but uh, oh well. And uh, as for the rest, here we have the power supply, which obviously is going to be the center of our attention. And we have some uh, processing for the image. Nice big chips. Oops. There it is. Mi Mi Micronas. Okay. Here we have some other circuit boards. There is that horrible display controller board, which uh, went bad on the Orion TV. That's why that is not working properly. So. Hopefully it's fine in this one. And uh, here we have the tuner section, which as you can see is quite an interesting design. This is the antenna input right there. And uh, that goes into this uh, tuner box right there, which then has an output that goes into here. So I guess this is for regular on-air television and this is probably for cable television. This does not have digital television uh, capabilities. It also doesn't have HDMI or anything like that. As you can see, all you get is two SCART jacks and your front AV inputs. Telephone jack for service. You get a DVI input, so, well, actually, you could hook up a, an HDMI device using an adapter. The little jack right there is for the PC audio. This unit was made in 2005, found a date stamp. It says assembled in Hungary on the back, but uh, we just take a look right there. Display was made in Taiwan. There we have the uh, driver for the backlight. Right. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to get the compressor and uh, get some of the uh, some of the dust out of there. As you can see, it's quite dirty in there. And, well, I guess I'm just going to go from there, see why there is no power. Right, I blew the TV out using the compressor. That definitely was worthwhile. I got a lot of dust out of there. 
Anyway, now I want to take a look at the power supply, and here is a bit of a uh, bit of an advice to all of you out there. Now, you might be tempted if you see the power supply, you want to go and see and wiggle around and touch it and find out what it's all about. My tip is, if you take a first look at a power supply, better go this. Just uh, like this, you may look terribly silly doing so, but that way you don't risk touching anything that you're not supposed to touch. And, um, well, I can see this was made by Matsushita Electronic Components, would you believe it? In Europe, would you believe it? Okay. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And uh, can't see anything that would be obviously wrong. This does seem to have a pretty decent quality as well. Okay, I got the power supply out. And uh, as it turns out, it blew the primary fuse right there. So uh, that's a bad sign. Well, not really a bad sign. Technically, it's a good sign because it blew the fuse instead of something else. Unfortunately, Matsushita definitely didn't uh, make this very service-friendly. Of course, uh, a service technician would go ahead, order this part, throw this one away, just put in another one. Maybe it works, you know, but uh, I guess I will have to go ahead and uh, unmount all these transistors and unmount the circuit board and then hopefully I can somehow pull it out. Okay, I have to say I'm not impressed with Matsushita design. I actually had to take a hammer to get those uh, things, those clips off that hold the, uh, the transistors in place. So uh, that's quite a kind of a questionable design. Now, I couldn't find anything that was obviously wrong. Uh, there is definitely not a dead short across the, uh, across the line input. As a matter of fact, when I measured the whole thing, uh, the meter it wouldn't even respond in the in the mega ohm range so there is plenty of resistance there so it's not just that there is something just totally shorted out um, I did some resoldering I resoldered a bunch of components especially the power transistors and uh, some others there was just not enough solder on there couldn't find any solder joints that were just obviously bad Measured some power resistors. Those were all fine. Uh, let's see, what uh, what brand is that capacitor down there? That I think that is Nippon Chemicon, so I don't think we have to worry about capacitors in this unit. Seems like they use some quality ones. Well, this one's just a little dusty, but um, anyway, I replaced a fuse. I replaced a 3.15 amp with a 2 amp fuse, so uh, in case something's wrong we shouldn't cause any further damage, because obviously this fuse is going to go off earlier than uh, the 3 amp fuse. But uh, really that's the only way to test it, you know, just uh, to find out if uh, the fuse, if, if that was just a one-time incident that happened there, and had caused the fuse to blow, the original one, or if there is really a problem, or if this power supply is fine and uh, just the, the, the load that's hooked up to it is having some kind of a problem. Well, I guess we're going to find out. I got this all hooked up, as you can uh, see, and as soon as I go around the corner and hit the power switch on the, uh, the power uh, bar, we should get some kind of response. Power is on on the TV. The TV is power supply. So let's watch the fuse down there and see what happens. Okay, well that uh, that was quite uh, quite a clear response. That fuse is gone. So we are dealing with some kind of a problem in this. Too bad. Well, bad news everybody. It seems like I've inherited a very, very troublesome television. Quick Google search revealed that there are plenty of people having problems with one of these models. And uh, most of them are power supply related issues. Some people have exactly the same problem as I have, where it just blows the main fuse. Some people have um, problems like where it 
it'll still go into the standby mode, but you cannot turn it on. Uh, some people have um, an error code flashing uh, using some of the power LEDs, apparently. Well, it seems like it all kind of uh, starts right there. This little chip right here. It's an Infineon TDA16888. And it's some kind of a controller chip, I believe. And for whatever reason, that apparently likes to fail. When it does, it uh, just causes a few other components, like for example these two, uh, to fail as well. And uh, of course, that's when you're in trouble. Um, as a matter of fact, this problem is so popular that uh, somebody even put together a repair kit for this TV, as you can see, for uh, 32 euro. Get some components, which are definitely not worth that much. One of them being that certain IC, as you can see. So, yeah. Um, that is what I found out. I also found out that the TV is not very good, even when it's in fully working condition. Back in its days, it got some pretty bad reviews. Um, and like, for example, it, the the TV tuner. Uh, by the way, the TV tuner. Um, what we've seen, the the one tuner being plugged into the other. Uh, this TV has two tuners um, because it has a picture-in-picture -picture feature that can display two different programs at the same time. But uh, the tuner reception is supposed to be rather bad. The AV inputs tend to have a um, they, they tend to be too red, like they have color issues. Um, the digital input that we've seen, the, the, the DVI input, um, due to some internal, well, some internal bad design, is just pretty much unusable. You just can't get a very clear picture. So the TV is not very good anyway, and that really, well, that really puts me off of this thing. And I guess what's going to happen is I'm going to bring it back to the dump and just be done with it. Of course, I could uh, I could order this um, repair kit. It does come with instructions and schematics. I actually did find the schematic of this uh, power supply uh, online already. Um, I could go ahead and try to repair it, but really, if it doesn't work, I'll be extremely annoyed. Uh, I don't have any equipment to solder this kind of SMD stuff, so that's going to be another problem. And uh, yeah, basically, I am. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not going to keep this thing just to uh, avoid getting into trouble with it and having just another thing standing around that uh, needs to be repaired. Um, the TV is the type Median MD3132, and this right here, this Matsushita power supply that is apparently such a bad design, even though it doesn't look like one, um, it has the part number ETX EZ524EAB. So, I guess that's about it. There it is. So, thanks for watching, and see you again soon.